Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back to the Fading Memories podcast. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you don't have to be multitasking while listening to this episode. If you do, plan on listening to it to it again because today we're discussing relaxation hacks and how to know when you need to start implementing them. And I'm ta- discussing that with today's guest. She's also a returning guest, Debbie Compton of The Purple Vine. And so help me welcome Debbie. And if you can stop and take notes, great. If not, listen to this one again. So thanks for joining me, Debbie. Thank you for having me here. It's good to be back. It's been a while. A little bit. I know. I think it's been about a year-ish, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going to say a year and a half, so I don't know. It's been a while. It's either a year or two, because I'm pretty sure we did it in June <laughs> last year. <laughs> I will make sure Debbie's other episode is linked in the show notes under related episodes, so you guys don't have to try to figure out which episode we're talking about, especially since I have a te- tendency to change the names because SEO is important and I'm not very good at it. So <laughs> It's like... Different names all the time. I never know which which episode is called anymore. So why don't you tell the listeners about yourself, a little bit about Purple Vine, what you've been up to in the past, whatever number of months it's been. <laughs> okay. Well, I, uh, I'm Debbie Compton. I'm the founder of The Purple Vine. And so our website is thepurplevine.com. And there you'll find blog posts and information, freebies, you can join the mailing list and once a week, I, I only do it once a week because I am a three-time caregiver um, in the past. And so I understand your time is valuable and you don't have time to keep getting bombarded. So I don't do that. And what has happened since I was with you last, I lost my sweet mother and lo- my, my mother, sorry, can't talk. Um, she ended her 20 plus year struggle with vascular dementia. And I was her caregiver. I caregive, was the caregiver for my dad who had Parkinson's for seven years. Also was the caregiver for my mother-in-law who had Alzheimer's until she passed in our home. And uh, her journey was about an eight-year journey. So I have a lot of experience as a caregiver, a lot of experience with stress, our main topic that we're going to talk about today. And then I became a certified caregiving consultant and certified caregiver advocate. So I learned a lot of great things that you can do to help yourself as a caregiver that I wish I would have known at the beginning. But that's why I do what I do. That's why I founded the Purple Vine. And that's to support caregivers, to get them the information that I wish I would have had and to help them have an easier time with their lives. Because you always hear, we have to take care of yourself. And, you know, are you taking care of yourself? But and I share as much many as many episodes on self care and relaxation, mindfulness, all that good stuff as I can without boring everybody. Uh-huh. But it's you know if you're on social media, they're always telling you you need to take care of yourself. And if they do share stuff, sometimes it's like, yeah, I tried that, that didn't work for my situation, which is probably exactly. more common than. Exactly. A lot of folks are like, yeah, okay, sure. I'll take care of myself when I have time and I don't have time. And I was exactly the same way. I just kind of look at them and smile. And inside my head, I'm thinking, you have no idea what I'm going through. Exactly. And Mm -hmm. I I have the the, um, sort of odd position is I have older friends who had done caregiving and you'd think they would have been more supportive, but I think and I'm not sure traumatized is the right word, but they were so ground down by those years that they didn't want to hear my stories. It was like, go take that to somebody else, which was kind of frustrating. Oh. But, you know, yeah. now that my mom's been gone for more than four years, I I can kind of understand it because I like to support people, but I get real frustrated when people don't listen to me. <laughs> like when I tell them, you really mm-hmm. should do X, Y, Z. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it's like, Ugh. I know. I know. And you're going, you ask me for help. I'm trying to help you. I can help you, but you got to let me, you got to listen to what I'm saying. I know humans, right? What can we do with ourselves? Yep. Mm-hmm. So let's, where do you want to start on uh, recognizing when we need to like yeah. stop and start taking care of ourselves? Cause once you recognize 
the signs, it's yes. probably you're probably on the edge of. I mean, it's never too late, trouble. but yeah, no, trouble. You're in trouble. Right you're in trouble. Yes, because I think as caregivers too, um, I know that we tend to minimize what we're going through. And we make sure that we're taking care of our loved one and we're making sure they have all their doctor's appointments and they have all their everything that they need. And then a lot of times we kind of neglect ourselves. And I know that's the way I was. And so some warning signs for you that you've got a little too much stress. One, the obvious one is, do you have a shorter fuse than you used to? Are you getting upset at people that didn't normally bother you and now everything bothers you? That's a good sign that you need to de-stress. De and then if you're feeling depressed and defeated, you feel like this is never going to end. I just, you know, everything is depressing. You wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is negativity. Then you need to do some de-stressing. If you're not motivated, you just don't feel like you can get up and go do anything. Everything is exhausting because you're tired. That's a big warning sign. And also then some something that people tend to uh, not realize is, are you getting sick more easily? Because stress lowers your immune system and can cause you to get sick more easily. And also if you get easily tired, but you can't sleep, you're <laughs> tired, but you lay down and you can't shut your brain off. You know, it's like your mind won't stop running. That's another warning sign right there. So, you know, I've given you six warning signs right there that we need to pay attention to. And then once you've realized that, then there are things that you can do to make life better. Well, since I suffer from this particular warning sign is you're tired, but you lay down and your brain starts going 100 miles an hour. That's been me all the time. Uh, my solution is I actually listen to either sleep podcasts or God forbid, mm -hmm. you're going to die. I listen to true crime, true crime podcast. It's the... Um, to go to sleep? It, it's the wow. modulated melodic voice. Wow. But I worry about what my brain is hearing after I've fallen asleep because most of the time I don't get more than five minutes in. So... Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, it's I could see that. It's the monotone that's putting you to sleep then. But but that's good because you found something that works for you. And and for me, that's the um, the waves. You can put on the gentle waves going back and forth. <laughs> I love being at the beach. I hear that and I'm like, oh, calm down. Everything settles down and I'm off to sleep. So, yeah, we're I, all different. I like, I like the sound of waves, not while I'm trying to go to sleep because it's going to make me have to pee. Ah, okay. Well, we're all different. I'll lay, I'll lay down with an empty bladder and be like, dang it. <laughs> now I'm awake because now I think I got to go to the bathroom again. <laughs> uh -huh. What other um, ways can we like quiet the brain? I have one hack that I really need to use more often because it's just amazing. Um, many of the listeners probably know that I'm a Peloton member. I like to basically say I belong to the cult of Peloton because that is kind of how some of us get. And they actually have evening stretches, like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And they're literally designed to wind your body down. I've learned to wash my face, brush my teeth, turn down the bed, turn the lights down, <laughs> like <laughs> get ready about as 90% as possible, ready for bed. Um, mm -hmm. because you literally, I mean, there's, there's a couple of times, one of the instructors that does these regularly will basically say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye to you here. You know, if you're asleep, it's okay. I'll be here when you wake up. And it, and it always, I always love wow. hearing that. I don't fall asleep, but I probably could if I, if mm -hmm. I laid there on the floor a little longer. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic because it does. You're stretching, you're getting oxygen into your body and into your muscles. And that's a great tool for you. And then you touched on another thing that's very important. And that is your sleep routine. Turn down the bed, you know, brush your teeth, wash your face. When you do all these things consistently, you're setting your mind up. You're signaling your mind, hey, it's about time to go to sleep. We're starting into the pattern. It's time for us to go to sleep. And that helps you to sleep better as well. It'll help you go into it. So that's a good job. Do you have any tips for people who like, because you're, sounds like your mother-in-law and your mom lived with you at some point. They did. And I know yes. with Alzheimer's, I don't know about vascular dementia. You can fill me in. Um, their sleep pattern gets all messed up. 
-hmm. and they're up at hours that like I know some caregivers, their loved one doesn't go to sleep till one or two in the morning. And there's just mm -hmm. no way my body don't work that way. I don't know how I'd function if that was my mom. Oh my goodness. You can't hardly. My mother-in-law was just up all through the night and particularly between two and 3 a.m. That's when she liked to get into things and go wandering. And I would just be so exhausted because I finally got my brain to settle down and I finally got to sleep. I'm in a deep rim sleep and I hear her moving around in the kitchen. And it's like, oh, here we go again. But yet for her, now I used uh, lavender essential oil and I used peace and calming essential oil. And so I put a little bit of those that on her wrist and a little bit on her temples to help her to calm down. Now, then she got resistant to that. She didn't want me putting those things on her, you know, how it goes. Yep. So I was able to find a little stuffed animal that she absolutely loved. And he was infused with lavender. And so I got it. Uh, I think it was actually made for babies to help them calm down and sleep. But it worked great for my mother-in-law to help. I mean, it didn't solve the problem but it did reduce its occurrence. And so that's what we're going for here. You know, it's 100% is fantastic, but if you can just get something, get some help, take the win where you yeah. can. Yeah. I actually and have so, a, a lavender spray that would have yes, worked. Yes, I do too. You, I spray it on the pillows and a little bit in the yes. air and yeah. it's lovely. It, it helps. It really do, helps. I have a you, lavender spray too. You do that and you yeah. do your evening stretches and then you're like barely dragging your fanny back into bed. <laughs> Works really great. But this one caregiver I know, their person's nighttime, like full on sleep has just gotten later and later. And I'm thinking, I personally would try to modify that. Like I wouldn't let them no. sleep until 10 a.m. I would, I would right. start with like, let's wake them up closer to 945. Like let's not tiptoe around. Yes. You know, and then, you know, after a week, let's work on 930. Because, like, literally, yes. I could I could sit down on the couch at 9 o'clock and be like, gosh, I don't feel too sleepy. I'll, I'll watch an episode of TV. And and then, lo and behold, man, 10 o'clock, it's like, oh, I'm tired. And that's and that's exactly what you do. You, you touched on it. That's a perfect thing to do. Because if they're going to sleep later and later, they need to get a little more exercise through the day also. Because if you're tired, it's easier for you to go to sleep. So get them a little more exercise through the day. Move up the sleep time a little bit. Wake them up if they're sleeping late. And you don't have to go in and shake them to wake them up. <laughs> Hang around in the kitchen a little bit, you know. <laughs> this particular person that, is bed bound. So the exercise would be tricky. But do you have any tips uh, for that? Because obviously, just because they're bed bound doesn't mean they can't do they some should still be yeah they should still be moving the arms and legs to get exercise and to keep the blood flow so you could just do more of that more leg exercises and and things like that would help yeah yeah i don't know why they don't do that not my place to 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 make any judgments i just feel like that would not work for me like literally i'm the kind of gal that goes to the New Year's Eve party, our, one of our best friends, her birthday is New Year's Eve, so it's kind of hard to avoid. And mm -hmm. they know I'll probably bail out 10, 30, 11 o'clock because that's what time I'm done. My social battery tired. is drained. I'm tired, need to drive home. It's all fine. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, mm -hmm. it, New no. Year's will has probably already, ha it's already happened where you're at. You're on the East Coast. Yeah. I'm on the West Coast. You know, I just celebrate New York time zone and go, go to bed at 10 o'clock and new year's arrives and you know i don't have a hangover as well. it, yeah it's like it's it i don't have to mark the exact minute because it's different everywhere else but yeah they just right. know and well, i, it, thing, I though, can't change my sleep different. pattern yeah right just we're all baked. created differently and that's why in all my books i say try this i don't say this will work for you because we were all different before we got the disease. We're all different after they get the disease. So it's going to work for a lot of people. It's maybe not going to work for some people. So that's why as a caregiver, you need a big toolbox. You need a lot of different things that you can try in any given situation, because just because it didn't work once doesn't mean it's never going to work. It might work the next time you try it. 
So you have to have a lot of different things. And one thing that, um, you know, you and I were going to talk about is, is really de-stressing for caregivers. And uh, you can get in those situations, you're wound up, you know, maybe your person is repeating over and over and over, and you can feel your muscles tighten. You can feel everything in you just tense up. And so, you know, I've been there many times. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, what can we do? Because when you're tense and when you're tight, you're also limiting the blood flow and the oxygen to your brain. It's very difficult to come up with a creative idea or creative solution when you don't have enough oxygen going on. So you need to de-stress first and pretty quickly. And one simple way you can do that is what's called box breathing. And that's where you just breathe in slowly through your nose for a four count and then you hold that breath for a slow four count. You exhale through your mouth for another slow four count and then hold that for four until you take another breath. And so you just slowly do this. You can do this anywhere. I have done it in the hall of the nursing room, no, nursing home. You know, it's just wherever you need it, just stop and do it at least three times of going through that process of four seconds. Slow breath in through the nose, hold it for four exhale through the mouth for four counts, hold that for four counts. And it will add oxygen to your brain. It'll help to relax those muscles. It'll help you to think more clearly and be able to come up with a better solution. So, and it can also lower your blood pressure because your blood pressure goes up too when you're tense and you're wound up and stressed. So that one, you don't need anybody's help. You can do it no matter where you are. You can do it as many times as you want. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't look silly doing it because you can't really tell. The the right. one thing you mentioned, you know, like repetitive questions or repetitive mm -hmm. stories, both of which my mom suffered upon me. And I do community education for the Alzheimer's Association. And one of the topics is dealing with different behaviors and repetitiveness mm -hmm. is one of them. And it's important to try to figure out what the trigger is. And yes. a couple of the triggers that I learned with my mom, you know, they were like literally head slapping moments. My mom thought I was her best friend. And so she would ask me if we were leaving the community. And sometimes even if we didn't leave the memory care that she lived in, she would want to know if her husband knew where she was or where we were going, or does my husband mm -hmm. know, insert whatever question here. And I, mm -hmm. for the longest time would say, yes, mom, dad mm -hmm. knows what we're doing. Now, did I answer her question? No. <laughs> and it happened one day we were going, I don't know, the nail salon or something. And from her room to the parking lot, her room was on the opposite side of the building from the parking lot. By the time we got to my car, she'd asked me that question five times to the point where I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, she's already worn me down. Like, I'm going to have to stuff her in the trunk, but I'll still be able to hear her because, you know, it's a sedan. It's not like, <laughs> not like putting her in the pickup or something. And I put her in the car. And as I walked around, I was like, trying to feel like, what am I going to do? Because this one is about ready to just abuse the crap out of my brain. And I'm, I don't know what happened, divine intervention, whatever you want to think of it. As soon as my hand hit the door handle of the car, it was literally like a bolt of lightning hit me. And I realized I am not answering her question. So I get in the car. She's like, and she always asked it in a snotty tone of voice because she and my dad had issues with each other. My husband know where we're going. <gasps> <sighs> yes, Chuck knows where ta I'm taking you to the nail salon. Did not ask me that question again the whole rest of the day. I was like, awesome. a miracle happened. I awesome. figured out what I was doing wrong. But the other thing, and it's she's a very way, way past guest, um, Helene Berger. She felt like we all do. Um, her husband was asking her the same question over and over. And she sighed and rolled her eyes like we all do. And she looked at him and the expression on his face was like she had slapped him. And she right. felt so badly, she right. vowed right then and there she would never do anything that would put that expression on his face again. So she developed a mantra, which is also something the Alzheimer's Association recommends. And she would mm -hmm. tell herself if he could remember, he would not ask. And he did not ask to have Alzheimer's disease. And that, that seemed yes. to work for her. So. There's a couple of yeah. techniques. Make sure you're actually answering the question and to use the same words. If they ask the same question twice, answer it the same way twice. 
because I my mom oh. also always asked, so what have you been up to lately? And I would tell her, well, it's Monday. I went to the gym. And then she'd ask. And I'm like, well, it's Monday. I went to Rotary. Every time she'd ask, I'd give her a piece of the day, knowing that I couldn't tell her, well, it's Monday. And so I did that, da, 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 da. And then I would uh -huh. always ask her, well, what have you been up to? And she'd go, well, you know, same old. Yeah, that's Thank that's you. what my mom loved to say, too. And it's yeah, and I'm a community educator for the Alzheimer's Association, too, have been since 2017. And uh, there's a lot of time there's things that you can do. And with that, you can use distraction, too, because I put it only took four little pictures to put in a book to take along with us because I knew mom would get tense. Where are we going? You know, we're going to go see the allergy doctor, you know, where she doesn't doctor, ooh, bad word, you know, yeah. really makes her stress out. So, you know, we're going to go see the allergy people. But I had the four little pictures in there. So she'd look at the pictures. She'd make exactly the same comments on every picture all the way through it. And so at this particular time and she'd see, you know, my niece, Ashley and, and her little girl. And who's the, what a cute baby. Who's that baby? That's Audrey. She's Ashley's daughter, you know? And so we're sitting in the lobby. She's doing this same thing over and over and over. And we, and then I had a business call come through and I was like, mom, I got to take this call. So I'm on the phone. Mom still is going on with her same questions. Doesn't even recognize the fact that I'm on the phone, even though I told her and she can see the phone. Doesn't matter. And the thing that just blessed my heart was the little lady on the other side of her took over and started answering because she'd heard me answer over and over. And she says, yeah, that's Ashley. That's Audrey, her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cracking up. I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> that reminds me of a story real quick because, Lord, we're going off on the stories today. But it's good because I think they're helpful. So my mom's repetitive story was, I've had dogs all my life. And when I was pregnant with my first, which was me, my mother-in-law said, well, you're going to be getting rid of the dogs now that you're having a baby, right? Apparently that pissed off my mother enough to remember that till she died. Yeah. <laughs> and Those things and, happen. Yeah. And she repeated it in front of my grandmother. So, well, that was fun times too. But she oh, was cool. in memory care and she had a friend who, they, there was a stuffed animal somebody had given my mom. It was a dog. And they're going on and on about this stuffed dog. And I'm thinking, oh, thank God they have each other to talk to. Because I, I just mm -hmm. I just had a hard time. And, you know, this is probably not the best phrase. Basically dumbing things down enough to, like, be in my mom's reality. That was very, very difficult for me. I think I could do better now. Um, but I don't have that opportunity to try with mom. And my mom starts right in on that story. That always started with a deep breath. So you always knew it was coming. to be like, <gasps> When I was, it was like, You're at you, yeah, a lot, at least you had a big warning and I had not been paying quite enough attention to catch it. And so I was like, ah, shoot. Um, I didn't get a chance for the distraction question. And her friend got, slapped her leg and said, you've told me that story 803 times. And I, oh. I had a hard time not hurting myself laughing. I was trying so hard not to laugh out loud because one, I thought, Holy hell, I hope she hasn't told my mother or my mother hasn't told her this 803 times. And that's a very specific number. It is. And about six weeks later, the same gal could pretty much repeat the whole story. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like elder abuse. <laughs> it was just like, but it worked for them because, you know, she didn't. She when she told my mom, you've told me that story 803 times. My mom was like, I have. She wasn't offended. If I had said it oh, in the exact good. same tone of voice, she would have been pissed off yeah. at me. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, no. Ooh. Yeah. I was That's shocked. Good. I was, I was shocked on so many levels. Like that. They just, was... they had the wildest conversations that made absolutely no sense. You know, one with Alzheimer's, the other one with um, vascular dementia. And, and they'd be in opposite rooms and they'd say something to each other and the other one couldn't hear it right. And so they'd comment on it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm in the kitchen going, this is insane. That's so funny. But they were both happy. So it was great. They were happy. That's what that's you want. Of, yeah, that's one of the things I tell people, you know, there there's still such a negative stigma on memory care. I was 50 when my dad died. My daughter had just moved out. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm moving my mom in for the next, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Thank you. Oh, that was not on the plan. Um, she only lived for three. So there are times I wonder if things would have been different had I known it would have been short lived. But 
you know, no. You never know. Because, you never yeah, know. Yeah, because it was the circumstances, I think, that she fell and broke her leg. So that's that was the oh, end. Her, yeah. her body was like, yeah, that's it. Um, and it was yeah. right at the start of COVID. So it's just like, okay. Um, mm. But we were talking about, like, um, when you don't feel motivated. You wake up and you're like, ugh, tired. And I just slept and I'm tired. And I don't feel like doing any of the 400 things I have to do today. So how do we mm-hmm. kind of motivate ourselves around that? I try to remind myself that it's okay to maybe set aside some of the to some of the to do's that I have. Yes. And I usually find I have more energy if I do a workout, which is, yeah, I don't understand the physical, like that is biology on, of that, that is on my list exercise. And people are like, what? Because, <laughs> because you look at the one where we mentioned earlier exercise to help you go to sleep, but that's stretching. That's different aerobic exercise, doing things that get you moving, get your heart pumping, gets the blood flowing and the oxygen helps you think more clearly. You're getting endorphins, which are the feel good chemical. So you feel better about what you're doing. And another thing you can do, because if you're just, if you're one of those folks that are just going, I am not exercised. Okay. That's all right. (laughs) I got you. (laughs) What you need to do is when you first wake up in the morning and you're feeling yuck, List three things that you are absolutely thankful for and don't repeat it. The next morning, three different things. Don't don't let yourself take a shortcut. Exactly. Because you're going to go, hey, family, friends, you know, no, it's not what I'm talking about. Get specific and list three things that you're thankful for. And another great tool that you can do is journal because write down those three things that you are so thankful for. And then the next day, look back on it, write down the three three other things that you're thankful for, and then something funny or humorous or that brightened your day that day. What happened that day? Did someone let you cut in front of them in line? That's nice. That makes you feel good. Did someone buy your coffee at Starbucks? It makes you feel good. You know, whatever it was, did your loved one have a moment of clarity and they said something sweet to you? Write it down because you think you're going to remember and you're not. And that's that's what I did was just to write down and record the funny things that happen, because when you're in caregiving, it's easy to get depressed. You're surrounded by negativity. You're surrounded by, I hate to say depressing, discouraging things going on, and you need to refocus on the positive. And so when you reframe that mindset, you feel better. You're happier. You're more joyful. And guess what? They are, too. Because they react to you. And if you Mm -hmm. walk in and you're angry and upset, they might react in an angry and upset way. So so we have to control our behavior. We're the ones with the filters. They are not. (laughs) That's very true. You can appreciate and laugh at. You've told me that story 803 times. It still (laughs) makes me laugh. It's been, I don't know, let me think. That must have been 2018. So it's been a mm. been a few years, you know, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. a little more than six. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I have a picture of them discussing this dog. My mom's standing and she's got the dog in one hand in her hands and the other Diana is sitting with the front end of the stuffed animal in her hands. And you could tell they're having this conversation about it. So every time I see that picture, I, I remember that oh, story because that's sweet. it was hysterical. Um and yeah. it was even more hysterical when the other Diane's my mom's name was Diane. I don't know if you remembered that. Um, mm-hmm. So my mom befriended Diane S and they befriended Diane R. So it was Diane, other Diane and other, other Diane. Cause even with perfectly cognitive it skills with dementia, three people with the same name was really pushing it. Yeah. Um, except you'd ask, I'd ask my mom, Oh, where's your friend, Diane? I'm Diane. Yes, I know the other Diane. What do you mean? The other, it's like, I was like that oh, whole Laurel and Hardy. Who's on Diane. first. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, never mind. I'll, yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask somebody with brains if they know where the other Diane is. It was crazy. Um, but oh, it was, man. It was fun. And they they literally entertained each other. And it made, I would mm-hmm. take my mom and one of the other Dianes out together. People thought I was yeah. insane. I'm like, but they talked to each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It helps. I, just, I took my mom and my mother-in-law all over the place to get haircuts, to the grocery store, you know, to go to doctor's appointments because they both hated to go. So I told mom that we were taking Jean to the doctor's appointment and be quiet and just act like it's for her. 
And then I told Jean it was mom's doctor's appointment, but don't tell her because she gets nervous. Let's ask, act like it's for you. So I get them in there to the doctor's office and they both say, it's her appointment. The doctor <laughs> looks at me and I just smiled. He says, well, since you're both here, why don't we just go ahead and check you both out? I'm like, yes. <laughs> now, see, that's one place where we need to add something. And like, not that general physicians need anything else on their plate these days, but it would almost be beneficial if when you take your loved one to the doctor, they also check you out. Like just that should just be standard practice, which maybe we can make happen. That would be great. Because then that you wouldn't would you wouldn't be trying to find somebody to watch your loved one while you go to the doctor, because who the hell wants to pay for that? Like nobody wants to go to the doctor. We don't want to have to pay somebody to watch our loved one. That's two negatives. That's a strikeout. I don't care how two two strikeouts, no thank you. But if you went and did you together, and maybe you can just mm -hmm. schedule them together so that yeah. You know. I scheduled their appointments back to back. Yeah. And so that way I just took them both in at the same time. But I did I never thought of having one for me because by the time I got through two of them, it I'm done. You know? I think it'd be trickier if there was if you were trying to do three, but for most of us we only have one person to deal with. And yeah. so so there's a yeah, hack. Be... Schedule like general checkups together so that yes. you have like at least maybe half a thing less to worry about. And then you can tell them the truth that you're going to the doctor and you just want them to go along with you because that's true. Yep. So mm -hmm. that helps. I believe in therapeutic fibbing, but it was still hard with my mom. You don't lie to your mom. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's, you have to be cautious and, um, but, but when mom would be looking for dad and want to know where he was and dad had passed away. And so I started at first, I told her, well, dad died. Remember, we went to his funeral. Then it's brand new and she's yep. crying and she's in tears. She's all upset. And I'm like, okay, note to self, that was not the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, wrong, wrong we choice. Don't want to do that again. Let's try another track here. And uh, so then I'm like, well, he's not here right now, but you'll see him again. And I believe that's true. So I wasn't lying to her because I'm a Christian. I believe he's in heaven and she'll see him again. So, you know, you have to, you have to find what works and, um, use discretion. I don't know how to say that, you know, your person, just know your person. And that's going to make life so much easier if you know their likes and dislikes. And, and if you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Just don't do it again. Yeah, find they another remember. Path. <laughs> they, they probably won't, but if you do it again, you're probably going to get the same result. Yeah, my grandmother had that result. So I knew that was the wrong direction. So when my mom would ask about, quote, her husband, mm -hmm. first off, that was a little bit easier to just kind of wing it, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Um, and I would just answer logically and, and in different ways. I'd basically say, well, I think he's at lunch with, insert friend's name yeah. here. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw him at the Rotary meeting, and then he's going to do some errands. Um, right. I don't know. I haven't seen I, him today. Do you, he's probably out with so-and-so like just logical no. answers as if he were still no. living because I wasn't dealing with that. I mean, even no. he died on a, um, like Thursday night around 10 and we, she was shell shocked the next morning when I showed up, but then by the mid morning, late morning, it was like, she had forgotten. Yeah. And I don't, that's when she pretty much switched to, does my husband know where I'm going? You know, where's my husband? I have And it was always that tone yeah. of voice. And it's like, ugh. Well, because he that didn't was... come back. She hadn't seen him. Yeah. But when you gave, when I gave her the answer of, you know, he's with his best friend, George, or he's at the Rotary meeting, or my dad did a lot of uh, volunteering with the Salvation Army. Um, just whatever he normally did, that's the answer I right. gave her. And I just varied the answers because one, I didn't want to say the same yeah. thing all the time. And right. I, don't, I don't think it made a difference to her. I probably could have told her he's with at lunch with George every time, no matter what time of day it was. And that would have worked, we, but I, I like variety. We went, we went on vacation. My brother-in-law went um, with me and a couple of other cousins and stuff. And we took my mom and his mom and we went to Branson. And on the way there... I got food poisoning and had Ooh. to be hospitalized as soon as we got to Branson. Oh, and no so, fun. you know, here I am caregiver, I'm in the hospital 
And here are these people who are not used to being a caregiver. They have full responsibility <laughs> of both these little ladies. <laughs> Drop kicks so, right into the heart of it. <laughs> yeah. And so they just kept, they told mom for three days that I was at the grocery store. And then I was at the other store. You know, they're like, she's shopping. She's at the store. And so mom would be like, oh, okay. Well, where's Debbie? She went to get groceries, you know. She went to go, she went to go buy some more clothes. She went to go, but it was always shopping. I'm like, wow, three days of that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Your credit card bill must've been rough. <laughs> yeah. But Hey, whatever works, you know, you got to protect yourself. And that's what we were talking about with the caregivers. Caregivers, you've got to take care of yourself and um, self-care is not selfish. Nope. So is there one of the warning signs that you talked about that you're like really passionate, like people need to pay attention to this and here's how you think you should handle it, that we should wind down with. So I think we've oh, provided I... some really good information today, but yes. let's, let's leave them on yeah. a home run. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was having headaches, but I didn't mm -hmm. associate the headaches to the stress levels for whatever reason. I thought it was, it's allergies. It's, whatever, you know, it's because my shoulder hurts, it's something else, but it was all because of headaches. And so then for those people you mentioned earlier that you don't want to pay someone to stay, I didn't want to either. But what I did was came up with the brilliant idea. Well, we have seniors at our church that are lonely and they are still mentally fully there, but they can't drive anymore. So I called a senior and said, hey, would you mind sitting with my mom for a while? She says, sure, great. So I drove over and picked her up, brought her to my house, sat the two ladies on the couch with their drinks, and they watched movies while I soaked in the tub, while I relaxed, while I walked outside barefoot, because that's a fantastic grounding, as long as you're on grass. Don't, don't do it on concrete. It doesn't help. <laughs> do it on grass. And so, but it was a great de-stress time for me. It didn't cost me a dime. They were both happy, happy as they could be. The other little lady had purpose in her life because she was helping me. She was cognizant, so she could have come to get me at any point in time. I was right there, but it gave me a chance to separate and de-stress. There's yeah, a way. I love, I love that solution because, you know, we probably, you've probably read just like I do that loneliness is becoming a bigger and bigger issue in our country, not just with the older population, but they are definitely more vulnerable because of lack of ability to drive or, you know, mm -hmm. get out and, and do like the volunteering or the things they probably did earlier in their, in their years. And so to help you and so you're, it's like, that's a triple win because your mom got yeah. something out of it. The, the church member got something out of it. You got something out of it. And it's just fantastic. Yes. It was great. That, that's an excellent um hack to leave people on but the other reason you came on today was because what are you on your fifth book now i see five behind you so i know you've well, got a it's new actually, book out it's actually 10 um, oh my this lord is number 10 <laughs> i have five behind me because those kind of those relate to caregiving the others that i've done are for different family members i've got a um a teenage granddaughter and so i made a lovable llama journal for her because journaling is great, write your feelings down, and then you don't worry about it. Great tip also for caregivers there, write it down, then you don't keep worrying about it. If you're going through memorizing your list that you have to do tomorrow, write it down and forget it. Um, and then I have a special needs grandson that's six years old and he loves baby shark. So I created an undersea um, creatures for him to teach him to read and write and to add. And it has puzzles. It's got all kinds of stuff and it's an undersea activity book for him. And so, and others too, but, and a booster brain power, which is great for people to check out because it's things that it's not supplements. It's not selling anything like that at all. It's things that you can do to improve your memory. So that's called boost your brain power. But the new one that I'm so excited about comes out the first part of July and it is called The Caregiver's Advocate, A Complete Guide to Support and Resources. And I was so excited about this because Brave Healer Productions reached out to me and asked me if I would be lead author on a collaboration book. Well, I'd never done a collaboration book before. All of my books have been on my own. So I was like super excited because I love collaborating. And so I set about and gathered up 20 people from four different countries 
to be a part of this project. And they tell a little bit about their story or something that gives an example of what they're going to talk about. And they give actionable, useful information to caregivers. And we start off with Alexis Baker talking about music therapy and how to use it and how to do it. We've got um, Alegi Law. She's an elder law attorney. Karen Alegi talks about things that you need to do, paperwork you need to have in place. And then um, I've got a, uh, a Michael Lewis who uh, does elder accounting services, and he's talking about ways to avoid scams, ways to not get taken advantage of and things that you need to be aware of. So it's every one of them have great, actionable, useful information, and they've all walked the walk so they understand. And I've got a I've got two husbands who took care of their or taking care of their wives with health issues. I've got a wife who was taking care of her husband and he actually passed away while we were doing the book. Um, and then I've got parents, a parent taking care of a sick child, um, terminally ill child. He wrote a chapter in there. And then I've got the normal, well, it's not normal, but <laughs> the more common, the more common, a child taking care of their parent. We have that situation. So we're covering all the different dynamics in here. And then we're covering all the different topics. And Kathleen Gordon talks about, um, you know, when it's time to have the talk, when you need to stop them from driving. And so uh, there's just so much useful information. It's fantastic. And I'm so excited because we even had a, a doctor proofread it and just to see, you know, what he thought and stuff. And and uh, she's like, we're going to, she said, I'm going to buy several copies of this and I'm going to have one copy in my waiting room because people need this information. And she said, I even learned stuff from it that I didn't know because even the last chapter of the book, I decided that, you know, we have these little pockets of information and we all have different resources that we use. Let's pull them all together. So we combined all the resources that we commonly use that are vetted, reliable, solid resources that can support caregivers. And that's the whole last chapter of the book, resources, alphabetical. Um, the links are there so that you can go straight to it, about 10 words of a description of what kind of services they offer. And it's just fantastic. It's it's such a great tool. Every caregiver needs to have this book. And if you know a caregiver, it makes a great gift. So yeah. it's called The Caregiver's Advocate. And it's on it's on Amazon. And then I will uh, I'll have it on my website as well. So if they want a signed author copy, just go to the Purple Vine and I'll get you a signed copy. Awesome. And you guys know regular listeners know that um Debbie's website will be hot linked in the show notes. So we'll have a link to the book and anything else that might be useful because you don't got time to look the stuff up and if you're if you're multitasking while you're listening, you don't have time to write this down and then go back. No, just huh? scroll down in the uh-huh. show notes. And nowadays, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, which is about ninety five percent of my listeners, um, you can read the transcript and find. Yeah. You know, it's like what was the name of that thing, and you can kind of scan it and look for like a name or a tool or a tip or whatever. So it's lots of ways to get this information and. I really appreciate Fantastic. that you came on and did this. I know some of the co-authors of this book are also past yes. guests. Alexis is one of them. And you had Raina um, from yes. Israel. She's Yudkowsky. She is a yes. fantastic memory care expert. Yep. She's yes. a past guest. And I haven't had a couple of the other ones you've mentioned, but I've had other people that have talked about the exact same stuff. So there's yeah, lots of ways to learn. The, Two ladies with the last name of Sargent that are in the UK. And the funny thing is one spells it S-A-R-G-A-N-T and the other is G-E-N-T. And one is a doctor and the other one is a live-in caregiver. She goes and stays with different people that she doesn't know. So so we have people from all different professions and all different walks. But yeah, great, great, great people. I'm so excited uh, for people to get to read their wisdom and their their tips and that's the thing that i told all of them is i want actionable useful information not fluff we don't want to do yeah. the fluff and i almost forgot i have a freebie for your folks awesome um, thank you yeah yeah for your listeners i've got a free handout called 10 ways to reduce stress and so that'll you do a fantastic job of putting hot links in for people thank you for doing that 
we appreciate it. It is a great way to uh, to make our lives easier. So thank you. But that'll be in the show notes then. Yep. That's and that's also on your website. Well, I don't know if it is or not. I don't know. It's not. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll work out those it's just details a freebie later. For you. It's a freebie for you. Okay. So I'll and have your it listeners. Linked. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, it'll it'll still be hot linked. We just don't know where the link's going to go just yet. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I appreciate this. I look forward to seeing the book. We're recording this in late June, and I know this isn't coming out till probably early fall because I got busy. So busy, it's live. But- the book will yeah, be live then. The book Yay. will be a New York top 10 seller by the Yay. time this comes out. We'll manifest oh, that awesome. one for you. Yes, they need a category you. for that. And, you know, there's just so many ways to get information. I hope this is, I, I know this episode is just jam-packed. So I hope you guys really yes. appreciate this. And as always, I appreciate you listening. My name is Jennifer Fink. Because I didn't say that earlier. And this has been the Fading Memories Podcast. And thank you so much. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.